Wouldn't it be cool to be able to draw almost anything from imagination? The answer is yes. It's so much fun, and drawing from imagination is a skill, so it can be learned. But how exactly do you practice it? Well, in this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll share with you the quickest path to drawing anything from imagination after teaching thousands of students over the years. Oh, oh, quick, class is starting, let's get to it. All right, class is in session, pay attention. Also, pay the class fee of either one like or one sub to help me pay for taxes and not go bankrupt. Learning to draw from imagination is basically the holy grail for artists. It's what most of my students aim for. For this class, I did my best to break down the process to get there in four steps. This is roughly what I did myself over the years, you know, of trial and error, leading to turning pro as a game developer. And an optimized version of that is what I now teach to my students via my art program, but more on that later. I'll be chatting about this as I play a time lapse of some recent drawings that I did. So if you don't care for the topic, at least you'll have something fun to watch. Maybe. Anyways, let's get right into it. The very first step to be able to draw from imagination is to actually start working to increase your imagination. Like most, you might be tempted to think that drawing using references will eventually help your imagination develop enough that you'll be able to draw without references at some point. But how many of you have been doing just that? Yet your mind just goes blank when it's time to draw something without a reference. It's clearly not that simple, unfortunately. Don't get me wrong though, drawing from reference is an essential part of it and it will be what you'll want to focus on the most at this stage by doing fun arts of your favorite characters or environments. To draw from imagination, you'll need a good amount of design knowledge and while well, copying a bunch of different designs from different artists is a great way to start storing ideas in your head. You've probably heard of the visual library before. I've mentioned it in previous videos. It's basically a metaphorical, you know, library of images, mental, visual references that you fully or partially memorized over the years. And fan art is a great tool to help develop it quickly. And when I talk about doing fan art, it could be drawing, you know, characters from your favorite anime, drawing your favorite movie character or game characters or landscape. The source doesn't really matter as long as you're copying a design that's already known to be cool. Copying visual elements that work well together as designed by professional artists will slowly help train your eye to recognize quality. It's training you to recognize what works well together, what's aesthetic. It's like always like eating simple home cooking, you know, versus all of a sudden going to a five star restaurant and seeing just how elevated food can become in the hands of a professional chef. And of course, you got to taste it first to know it's possible to make it yourself, maybe eventually. So the first step aims to broaden your horizon when it comes to design. In step one, the focus is one-to-one -one fan art, copying existing drawings without tracing, of course, or copying from a still frame of a series or movie, but essentially no creative liberty taken yet. That's for later. Once you've passed the first level and start feeling confident enough to go beyond simple copy, you know, simple fan art, the second step will be to explore modding your fan art, like a game mod that only edits a small portion of the game, not the whole game itself, right? The aim here will be to make small design modifications to the sources that you've been copying from in the first step. This will require some knowledge of what you're drawing. So a decent understanding of the fundamentals, something a short video like this doesn't really, you know, allow me to cover. But if you've been looking for help drawing or painting in general, I just so happen to have built a popular art program that gets more students each year than any traditional school around the world. Something that you should definitely check out with the link in the video description. It's got the best classes that you'll find in any art program, the best structure and the best price. With 19,000 students enrolled already, the only question is what are you waiting for? The price is at the lowest that it's been all year right now because of the ongoing sale, but that will be over at the end of this month, so don't miss out. All right, plug over. Now going back to what I was saying about modding your fan arts. The idea at this level is to start modifying your references. Now actually taking small design liberties with it. This could be as simple as changing the colors of a character's outfit from a series you like, but you can push as much as you want, you know, maybe working on gender swapping existing characters, 
maybe drawing alternative outfits for iconic characters, merging the outfit designs of two or more characters and creating a single outfit out of it, maybe? Doing this will force you to start thinking creatively, but within a strict set of rules. Creativity is scary. Often, complete freedom is hard to handle. It's actually been scientifically proven that a stricter creative environment actually helps boost creativity in people. So this is why I recommend working with existing designs so far. But that's going to change slightly with step number three. And again here, it's up to you when you feel ready to try this. But for step three, the challenge will be to start designing new characters, props, or environments within an existing IP. With this, you'll still be working within an established set of rules, but you should have much more freedom and this should really be a good test for your creativity. An IP or intellectual property is basically a world created by someone with a certain set of design rules and a common like backstory or context. Like when I was much younger, I would create my own new Pokemons with their evolutions trying to match the Pokemon style as much as possible. It could be to draw a new sidekick to a popular character or a new character in like, you know, like the Street Fighter 6 lineup. Some fun exercise I often recommend to students, especially those looking to become concept artists, is to draw character skins. You know how you can often purchase skins in games to give your character a different look? Those are super fun to design if you're an artist. They could be the same characters, but reimagined in a different time period, like from, you know, the future or from the distant past in medieval times, or versions with different levels of wealth, like a homeless version of Kratos, maybe from God of War with a busted outfit, and then maybe a super rich version of Kratos with expensive materials, you know, intricate designs and a high level of craftsmanship for his armor. I don't know. Another fun exercise is to draw existing characters, but at level one and then at level like 100. Imagining what maybe Cloud from Final Fantasy VII would look like as a level one weakling and then what he'd look like as a like God of War leading armies in battle how his design would have to change to represent each version. There's also super fun exercises. And of course, often you'll probably have to find references on Google, you know, if you don't know what plate armor is supposed to look like, or maybe how a basic weapon is designed, depending on its function to make sure it's believable. And that's the case for most professionals too. References are there to support your imagination as it grows, as your visual library grows. So where do we go from here? I'm not gonna tell you to just draw anything now that you're at the final step, at step four, the same logic applies here too, where we need a set of constraints to be able to be as creative as possible. That's always going to be the case. Remember this, total freedom shuts down creativity while constraints help promote it. It's counterintuitive maybe, but that's a fact. It's science. In step three, we were drawing new things within an existing IP, but this time in step four, you'll want to create the IP yourself essentially building a world to use as a set of guidelines for your designs. This is a big focus in my art program. I can't recommend this enough. It's just a matter of writing down a couple of notes, you know, about the world that you're drawing your characters in, or rather that you're planning to draw your characters in. And within the program, for example, I show students how I develop my world I call Chroma Island. Instead of drawing characters, props and environments, and then trying to make them fit together, we start the other way around, defining the general rules of the world first, and then imagining who or what might live there. In Chroma Island, for example, I have different tribes on the island, each featuring a different color on the chromatic circle and, and all competing for the same limited resources on the island. I have the red people who love war and are immortal, the green people who are basically plant people, the yellow people are small underground dwellers, the white people are a female only like deadly harpy like race, etc, etc. It's just an example, but once you have a set of rules to base your designs in, your imagination is free to flow and it makes creating anything new much easier. Drawing from reference won't make you draw from imagination all of a sudden, but pair using references with the structure, the four steps that I mentioned in the class, and you'll see how quickly your imagination will kick in. That's how you get to drawing anything you can imagine. And that's gonna be it for this week's class. I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, since I read every single one of them, don't hesitate if you have suggestions for future videos you think might help a lot of people. I have a long to-do list, but often I'll slide in an idea from the comments for a given week. Anyways, that's it. If you haven't already, 
go grab my free brush pack with the link in the video description. They are epic. It even includes my go-to pencil brush, the same I use for today's drawings. Heck, I even made a video on how to use the brushes. Just check it out. And also check out my art program while it's on sale.